Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Bitcoin report for Friday, February the 11th. So um, this is the crypto index here, obviously weighted to Bitcoin and uh, it's the top 10 crypto. And we're just looking at the stochastics um, here unfolding um, on this low here. Um, so I think that, you know, it's reasonably significant. Um, of course, they can uh, flatline and, you know, just run along the bottom. So we just need to be a little bit careful about that. Uh, the pattern here is just our alternative uh, pattern. We can have a look at, we've seen it on Bitcoin before, so we can, we can have a look at that and have a, have a closer look if you like. Um, but uh, let's go in and have a look at where we are with Bitcoin. So this is the daily chart. This is a correction that's occurring across the 50,000 um, in terms of the trading levels. Sure, the other levels like 30,000, uh, you know, coming into play and so on. Um, but yeah, if we removed all the lines, the 50,000 would be a nice balance point for all of that. So we're looking at uh, running flat with uh, wave three here with an A and a B and a C wave here for wave four. But to prove that, we need to get five waves to the upside. So that's what we're sort of hanging our hat on at the moment. But the reality is, is that we're only three waves up. So um yeah um it can be sort of corrective that's why we could also look at the um the alternative pattern here for the triangle pattern that we've uh, had here for a while now um yeah so it becomes valid so uh there's a couple of ways of looking at at this here i might need to have to adjust this here i'd imagine but um probably be something like this here might might even go out that far we'll see um actually we can look at that on the two hour chart just to get a bit of clarity on that um yeah so <clears throat> as i mentioned we've got um an a and a b and a c wave up here so we can count that as one and two and then uh, one, two, three, four, five, the third wave and fourth and fifth here. So it's one, two, three, four, five here. So that can be wave A and wave B can come back uh, here and then we could go up for wave C and then over here, yada, yada, yada. Um, so one way to be able to figure this out here really is that um, well if the market pulls back down just below the 40,000 well then we can look at it as wave B but otherwise we're looking at um, it as a wave 4 so just going back to the daily chart for one moment and just getting our bearings here so in a nutshell we're just looking for five waves up here we also know that um, this low on the 24th of um, 24th of January is the same low that the equity markets um, were in place as well, the S&P and so on and so on. So uh, all those types, all these types of assets are, um, you know, moving the same. And <clears throat> the Fed's comments uh, also last, last session um, has also um, showed up uh, in a bit of a spike in in the uh, Bitcoin here as well. So um, let's just cruise in here to the four hour. We'll also look at Ethereum as well quickly. So this is the uh, count that we've got had here. So last time we spoke, we were just coming up here somewhere. And um, but anyway, we've made a new high here, so that's all good. So one and two, and one and two, and one, two, three, four, five for the third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave, and this um, forty-two thousand is the thirty-eight point two percent retracement level. Uh, this is the wave four, one lesser degree here. So we could anywhere in that space is fine now i also just mentioned we've got a 50 60 percent retracement level down here for a wave b so if we end up down here then we'll be looking at that um that pattern you know um, but otherwise um everything said and done just broad sweep here that would be looking for something like this to go up to wave one and then back for wave two here so the interesting thing here is that if we if we get those five where if we if we get those five waves there then we know that we're going to get a correction in three waves over here and then we're going to get another five up here so that that would like getting completing this here would would also confirm the bull market at that point 
So we don't know that. We just have to go step by step and uh, one step at a time and uh, work through uh, work through this. So let's just continue to drill in and have a look at um, Ethereum as well. I'll need to update the hourly chart and the the other guys, um, but that's okay. Won't take too much. So uh, we've got one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So we're looking for that fifth wave up there. Bit of a dodgy five waves uh, here with all of this, um, but still we made a new high. So um, uh, I'll take that. Um, but also too, it can be wave A here, of course. And uh, now we're looking for the ABC. I'll go to the tick chart to look at that. But that brings us into the 42 area here. And um, if it's if we're just going to end up with a wave A up here, we'll only know that if it comes back below the 40,000. OK, so, um, yeah, we've just got to see what we get, really. Um, what's that? That's nothing, that line. Just, that's group one, the midpoint group two. So that's all good. We'll just go to the... Um, tick chart actually we'll just go to ethereum first and come back to that because just while we're on that sort of pattern here i mean ethereum's just got such a such a nice count um so we're looking for that fifth wave up there we got that and then we we're looking for our fourth wave here so that fourth wave uh, here but what we do here I mean obviously the um, 3000 major trading level 3 is going to support that there will be a sticky number at least we can see the we can see the 38.2 percent is below that so yeah look I just think give it a little bit of time let's just see let's see what we've got at this point because we don't know I mean that's the whole thing isn't it it's like all of this could be counted up as an A and a B and a C wave up here for that that could be a top of a C wave and that's you know that's the end of it there and we're in something else we don't know I don't know I don't know how to um, how to know that in any other way at this point in time um, let's just go into the um, that would be one, two, three. It's a nice third wave in here, fourth, fifth. So at least I could make a bit of an effort and put that there and that there. And then we've got this. So I just want to go into the tip chart here. 100 ticks. Okay. Let's clean our mess up. So I'll just get rid of some of this, but we're looking for a fourth wave the last time we spoke we're looking for the fifth wave so that's there that's there that's there and then we've got this you know, do we call it in like this is that the abc is that it we're done we're done i don't know we'll check just wait and see we've got um as you can if i got i'll leave those there just for a little while so i'll just get some new ones here so it looks like wave one and two and whoops a daisy if i put two there i'll swap them around in a second and i'll just check on that in a moment anyway nice third wave fourth wave here um i won't bother going in and counting all of that at the moment but that could be Nope, that's got to be sitting there. So you can count that with wave one here and ABC for wave two. So you can start that count and that's a good little exercise for you. And you can find that low down here. Obviously, there'll be a bounce off down here somewhere. Look, if you're if I was going to go long here, then I would want the 3050 as my first position here. You could go to the 30 here as top of group one if you wanted to. Then the next one, if you're building in here on very small positions, and then the 30, then the 50, and then the 100 here. So you'd want a little classic trading level pattern on each of those. So it looks like that. If that's the 30, the 50, or the 100, the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, the ABC, and then you enter over here for that. So you really just want to enter on 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 a high. You want this is, you know, it's okay to say people, you know. You know, people all everybody understands what support and resistance is, but when you break it down to actually what it is and where you would enter off all of that, well, then people don't know that very well. Not, I mean, obviously some do and some don't, but 
So if this is the line here, the market's going to migrate from being resistance to support. So this is the most common pattern of all, where it has the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, and that will be wave three, four, and five, and then we'll have an ABC here. And then this little pattern in here, it's just got a simple line here, but this little pattern here will contain, it's just a fractal of this larger pattern here. So that means we'll have the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, the ABC pattern here. And look, it takes a bit of a skill set to find that one. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. So that you always start from the top. Like folks come in and buy the dip, that's kind of okay, and it doesn't matter what you do, as long as you know what you're doing and you, you know exactly where you are in the structure and so on. But if not, you come from the top, because if you come from the top here, then the, if the market's going to take out that first high above the level there, then it's telling you that it's tested this level here, and it's, it is it's being tested as support. Now, you can also read that through the volume as well. So that high and then that high here um, and lower highs. And then you also work to the trading levels over here. You find out what price. You might be in group one here, so you know what group top of group one means and uh, so on and so on. But you want the market to prove to you that it is strong and you do that by taking out a high and uh, it's proving to you that you know the market's strong, it's a much safer trade. Because if you buy under the level, under the closest largest number here, if you buy under that, well, if the market's gonna fail, it's gonna fail at that number. You know, I'm not saying it will, but if it was going to, well then, you know, so you need to be on top of that situation. I uh, forgot what I was going to say, the rest of that, but um, yeah, I think so. Bitcoin will be basically the same as well. It's just going, oh no, it's got a different little high here, so that's interesting. So that means that um, in this case, we'll be looking for, unless uh, it's an expanded flat, which I don't think it is, so we'll go an A and a B, and we'll drop this down here somewhere. So we're looking at the 42, so some sort of, some sort of, That will be finished. I can see that's one, two, three, four, five here, finishing off here. So that will be something like that. If it's going to move up, that's where it's going to move from at that point. If it comes down here, normally, if when we're talking about, um, well, 40 is a um, medium level, and then one, two, and three. So it's just really the Fibonacci numbers one, two, three, five, and eight here. We're missing number eight, but that's also part of group two there. That's 4650. 46,500 in this case, near enough, good enough, and then 72 there, we don't need to worry about that. But the Fibonacci numbers, one, two, three, five, and eight as a price ratio. The 40 here, so when we're talking about group one, one, two, and three here, if the number two here becomes the retested resistance, that means that we need to see to the downside like this, if that becomes the resistance. And, we, and it's only called resistance if it takes out either that low or the second low and then it's rejected that it's tested it rejected it taken out the low where there was any previous support and then you're, if that occurs at that number at, at two then we're going to be forced down to the closest largest number which will be 40 and then we could be pulled into this number so that's where we'll be at that point but I can just see that's five waves here, so there'll be some sort of uh, corrective move at that at that stage. So, um, yeah, so we'll just leave it at that. So just to recap a little bit, this is an alternative count part of the triangle, but in terms of... Um, um, in terms of our count, we're just looking at uh, one and two here and three and four and five, and look, this is exactly the same count as the S&P 500 that we had, but obviously the S&P is still now in wave four because uh, that Fed person made that comment, which, um, you know, I, I think it was a bit irresponsible myself, but, you know, perhaps it was part of their, their message media um, campaign I guess in letting the public know but you know I mean you've got a head office and then you've got all the other ones so you'd think you would be they would correlate everything and, and deliver a message in a particular way you know I mean everybody knew that the market was so close in the 10 yield the 10 year yields were so close to the 2% anyway I mean I mean and they've been there for a, for a while I mean we could see those anyway on um on, on that, we can just have a bit of a look at it now. So the 10-year yields, you know, we'd been counting all the way up here, um, looking for that. So we'll just go to the daily chart to bring in the bigger picture here because I think it's important. 
So we're looking for an A wave and a B wave here, and then going up for a C wave here. So one, two, three, four, five. So, I mean, look, they're so close here anyway, and that's a 50, 60% at that point. Um, I don't see what the big deal is to make an announcement like that, but um, who am I? So let's um, leave it at that, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Let's see what this wave four does. Enjoy the weekend. Cheers.